We are living in the age of big data. And that's not any different for engineers who have to adapt to this as well. So chemical engineers are responsible for the development and the manufacturing of important pharmaceutical products. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you would use sensors online in the reactor to monitor the quality of the developed pharmaceutical. And we've come a long way when it comes to production of pharmaceuticals. So for instance, think of insulin. Insulin has been used since the 1920s in order to treat people with diabetes. However, until the 80s, people had to use tons and tons of pig's cadaver in order to get like only a small amount of insulin from it. So nowadays, the insulin that you get from your pumps and your pens doesn't come from cows or from pigs, but it's produced using designer microorganisms. Insulin was the first protein that was produced using a recombinant DNA technology. So recombinant DNA is a generic term for when you have DNA that was created from at least two different fragments from two different sources. When you think of insulin, you can implement the human gene encoding for insulin into the DNA of common bacteria. So what you would normally use is E. coli or yeast cells. And in more specialized cases, you can also use mammalian cells, such as Chinese and strawberry cells. Here is an example of E. coli. It has these little tentacles, so it means it can move really fast. You've got millions of those in your gut, and normally they're very good for you. But unfortunately, some of them give you diarrhea. And why E. coli? Coli, it, it rapidly grows, it's very cheap, and it's very well understood. As there are very strict requirements to pharmaceuticals, you really need to rigorously control and monitor the growth process in order to ensure that you have absolute reproducibility and to guarantee the quality of the product. You can do that in two different ways. Obviously, you can check the quality of the product offline, meaning when it comes out of the reactor, so then you need to see whether it's within the specs. But what is very important is that you monitor it online. So while you're actually doing the growth process, you can monitor it online because then you can still adapt the parameters in order to get it to the quality that you want. Here I'm going to give you an example of the online monitoring of nutrients within the bioreactor and show that this is a critical process parameter. Because it means that if the concentration of nutrients is too low, then you're actually starving the cells. So if they're not having enough food, like when you don't have enough food, that impacts their metabolism. On the other hand, if the concentration is too high, so they're actually growing too fast, and then they can produce byproducts. So for instance, you can have lactate, you can have ammonia, and all of these cause stress to the cells. So it's very important that you keep these nutrient levels within a required range. And what is even more important is because in general, the processes in bioreactors tend to be slower. So it's not just a process of several hours, it can go on for weeks and weeks. So you need to control it steadily for a long time. So what are requirements for sensors that can monitor things in bioreactors? Well, the first thing is it needs to be fast because you need to get like an instant feedback so you can adapt the process. It needs to be able to be do the second one is to using sterilizable probes because in a bioreactor, it's a very complex environment and it's very easy to foul your sensor. So it needs to be something that can be easily cleaned. And then ideally it needs to be the third, it needs to be non-destructive as well. So there's only a couple of sensors that you can really use in that regard. And near infrared spectroscopy or NIR and Raman spectroscopy are very good examples of that things where you can actually measure, for instance, nutrients or other compounds directly within the bioreactor. But again, it does have some challenges. So the three main challenges associated with this are as follows. The first, water. Water really interferes with your measurements. Second challenge, scattering because of the presence of interference. And the third and final one, you've got a lot of data. And how do you make sense of it? How do you do the interpretation? Bioreactors use water as a medium. And the main problem with this is, is that it has very strong NIR absorption. Even so much so that the peaks of water can totally overshadow the peaks of the other analytes, which are present in much lower concentration compared to water. In order to minimize the effect of water, you might be able to leave out the regions that are associated with the water peak. But you can also use algorithms. So for instance, interval PLS is a very common one. 
in order to select appropriate regions within the spectra that correspond to the product you're looking for. So within the bioreactor, you've got the presence of a lot of other particles and microorganisms. And that leads to problems related with scattering because these microorganisms, they alter the reflection of the light. So before you analyze the data, usually you want to do some background correction and you want to apply a number of filters in order to correct for this. And then the final problem, the days where you would just record one measurement per day are over. You will have a lot of data. And that leads to problems in itself, because you need to make sense of a lot of this data. And in order to do this, you will need to employ multivariate te techniques. This is partial least squares or principal component analysis to deconvolute and in order to interpret the data. In summary, near-infrared spectroscopy is a very valuable diagnostic tool in order to monitor certain compounds directly online within your bioreactor. But the interpretation of this is not an easy task, and the stakes are especially high when you look at the quality of pharmaceuticals. Nonetheless, as a chemical engineer, you've got a very valuable toolbox at hand when you're using multivariate techniques in order to interpret your data.